Now what I want to do is I want to create the geometry that I'm going to revolve, which is going to be the, one of the main bodies of this component. And if I take a look at the geometry here, many people would just kind of eyeball where they need to, uh, um, where they need to place this. And that's, uh, that is a, that, that's a big no-no when, uh, um, when it comes to 3D geometry um, or 3D modeling. It's cer certainly something that, that I would not recommend. So what I want you to do is we're going to utilize the project geometry tool. Now the project geometry tool, you'll note that if I float my cursor over any one of these commands, an expanded help appears which is really handy. So I'm accessing the help files um, without actually calling up the, the help. So projected geometry, what it does is it projects edges, vertices, or work features to your current sketch plane so that you can use those as references in the, uh, the geometry that you're about to create. It's a really, really handy tool and I probably use project geometry mm, almost more than any other command that I use. So if I go up here and say, you know, I need to be able to reference both the top and bottom edges of my existing body. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to call up the three-point rectangle. Now, if you, if you take a look at the ribbon bar here, there's arrows next to certain commands. So you can see there's an arrow next to the arc. There's an arrow next to circle. Well, what those do is those give you access to different types of geometry creation tools. So here, I need to create a three-point rectangle. So I'll call up the three-point rectangle, and I'm going to snap to the midpoint of both of those projected lines. You'll see that it turns green once I get to the middle of this, indicating that you are, in fact, on the midpoint. So I'll go ahead and um, snap midpoint to midpoint and give it my third point. And you'll note the dynamic input while sketching prompt uh, is available for me to take advantage of. And I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do that and say that I want this... Uh, the, the width of this particular piece of geometry to be six millimeters, tab through that, enter to execute the command, right click and choose done, and I've now completed the geometry that I'm going to revolve about itself. So I'll go ahead and right click and go to the home view. There's another way to access the home view is if you go to the view cube, there's a little home icon. I don't know that we could have made that any more clear, but if you click the, uh, the home view, that'll go to your, uh, your, your isometric view. So I'll go ahead and finish the sketch and click on the geometry and you'll note that I now have an additional direct manipulation glyph here. So I have extrude, revolve, the addition of the hole command because I couldn't have created a hole without any existing uh, geometry so that's why it didn't appear before. They're very contextual. All of these icons that we display for you very contextual uh, in nature. So here what I want to do is I want to go ahead and create a revolution. Now it's automatically picked up the profile because it was the only profile available in that sketch. And what it's prompting me for is select the axis. You can see that right at the cursor, it's prompting me to select the axis uh, to revolve about. So I'll go ahead and cl uh, click the, uh, the axis that I want to revolve about. It is indeed a full revolution and I'll go ahead and choose OK. All right, so my part's starting to take shape here. And you'll note that I'm, I'm now utilizing my, uh, uh, my space pilot um, to rotate around. So as you can see, um, real smooth rotations, um, something that I highly recommend if you're going to do a lot of 3D modeling, go ahead and invest in. Now I'm going to go ahead and create yet another extrusion. And it's again going to be on the XY plane. You can begin to see why I feel it's, it's, it's really important to get a good understanding and utilize your, uh, your origin planes. So I'm going to use that plane as another sketch. Uh, rotate around here a little bit, maybe toggle uh, to slice graphics. I'm going to project geometry just like I did before. I want to project that edge. Maybe reorient myself to a uh, front view. And I'm going to draw a circle right on the midpoint there. And this is going to be six and a half millimeters in diameter. Again, utilizing that dynamic input while sketching to not only create my geometry, but also create the dimensions. It's typically a separate operation in many CAN applications. And while I mention many CAN applications, one of the best pieces of advice I think I can give anybody that's new to any 3D CAD package, um, whether it's AutoCAD, whether it's Inventor, whether it's Revit, whether it's Max or Maya, um, or any of the other ones that are on the market, you'd be doing yourself a great favor if you take the time to understand how the application that you're using is communicating with you. And it's communicating with you in a, def in a number of different ways. One of the things that I've, that I've heard from people quite a bit is, you know, I used to use AutoCAD 3D 
and I'm not necessarily used to modeling in 3D in say Max or Maya. Well, the, the, the reason for that is you're trying to make that application that you're curr currently using today work like the application that you either learned 3D on before or uh, one that uh, um, you know, you, you'd, you'd had uh, some exposure to. So what I would recommend is, is, is take a little bit of time to, to learn how to certainly navigate, zoom, pan, rotate, and also get a clue as to the, the way that it's communicating with you um, and, and not try and make the application that you're using right now work the way or expect it to work the way uh, that it did in another application. You'll, 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 you'll do yourself quite a, uh, quite a favor uh, in, in, in doing that. So, okay, off my soapbox. Right click, I'll go ahead and finish the sketch, and I'm gonna go ahead and extrude this geometry. And this is gonna be another asymmetric, extr or symmetric extrude, rather. And as you can see, I'm gonna drag that up. I'm getting a nice preview. I'll drag that to 14 and a half millimeter, or type in 14 and a half millimeter, whatever you choose. And now I have the three main bodies, the, the, the main forms of my part, and I can begin to add some additional features to it. 